Thank you, Senator, and thank you for, for hosting this event. Uh, I'm going to begin. Penny noticed that, uh, that Emily used the word relentless. The, the word that struck, out, struck me, Emily, when you used it over and over again was cool. You weren't cool enough. You said that, I think, four or five times. Yeah. Cool. I am here as the superintendent of schools from Sioux City, Iowa, to introduce you to one of our coolest graduates we've ever had. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, that's Emily. right. You're a graduate of that she's, school. Yeah. She's also a hero, uh, as, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but I, I do want to acknowledge to her that this, uh, this community, at one way, in one way or another, failed you. And I'm, I'm certainly sorry about that. Uh, Senator, as you know, we've had a 12-year partnership with the Wade Institute for Violence Prevention. The Wade Institute was created by the founder of Gateway Computers. Mm -hmm. uh, the Wade Foundation has partnered with our district to provide funding and curriculum and training uh, around the area of bullying and violence in schools. We were originally par uh, approached by our partners at the Wade Institute recently to participate in a national documentary on bullying uh, in the American schools, and, and our participation was to highlight some of the progressive programs and significant success of our work on bullying in our schools. You see, Senator, we became visible on a national stage because uh, we were the first school district in the nation to create and implement a workplace bully prevention program for our staff members. We believe that in order to expect the best behavior from our students, we must make certain that we have policies and procedures in place to assure that our adults are also modeling the most positive behavior possible. I want to be clear, though, that the documentary filmmakers of this national film now titled Bully uh, were quite honest with us uh, that they would also like to spend some time in our district looking for a specific student or situation where they could see the reality of bullying from the perspective of an individual who was bullied. And while we're not particularly proud of all that is presented in the documentary, we do celebrate that our district has some of uh, the most progressive bully prevention programs available today. Yet we acknowledge that that work of art shows you, and I know you watched that recently, uh, some of our dirty laundry, if you will, that related to the challenges of bullying in American schools. I believe that the end result of that documentary is, is a work of art that's compelling and emotional and challenging. Uh, I'm proud of our school board uh, for stepping forward and having the courage to engage the national discourse on bullying, the most important topic uh, of our day. We do continue to believe in the importance of community and national dialogue on, on the challenges of bullying. Our participation in this documentary has created some of the most rich and most meaningful discussion in our own community about what the entirety of the community can do to assist and support schools in our efforts to prevent bullying. Uh, you see that's our perspective, Senator, uh, that bullying is best defeated by prevention, not by reaction. Many of the programmatic solutions, and I want to be clear, I ha think I have now heard from just about every company in the nation selling an anti-bullying product. Uh, <laughs> most of those products deal with how to react to, how to respond to bullying. Our district, our Board of Education, and our community continue to work toward the prevention of bullying-like circumstances. We have consistently said that we are not unique because we have bullying in our schools. But we do want to become unique by being the school district that makes a difference. You see, bullying is not specific to schools. Bullying is all around us. It's visible in shopping malls, places of worship, sporting events, community events, etc. Research tells us that only about 25 to 50 percent of children who are bullied actually tell an adult about the incidents, and we've certainly witnessed that low level of reporting in our schools. We have a challenge of finding ways to have students feel safe and comfortable reporting those incidents to us. We have now, uh, as an example, one of the ways that we've discovered uh, that, that we can find bullying without even the reports is, is that it became apparent to us that we needed high quality audio and video systems on each of our buses. We implemented brand new systems in our buses last year. We have about 70 buses. And we now have staff members who not only drive the bus, Senator, they spend time during the day watching sample footage from each of those systems looking for challenges. We have also now fully implemented some of the most progressive curriculum in the area of bully prevention education. Thank you uh, to the uh, Safe and Supportive Schools grants. Uh, the curriculum that we have is entitled Second Step for Students in K through 8, a program where older high school students work with younger high school students titled Mentors in Violence Prevention, uh, and a program in after school uh, activities titled Coaching Boys into Men. That's a program where we work with students to understand why they may be coached to be assertive or aggressive on a field of play, but that same level of assertive or aggressive behavior may not be acceptable in other areas of their lives. We have also made changes to our school board policies regarding bullying, hazing, and harassment, and, and those policies are not just documents, they are uh, action items for us in our district. 
Finally, I would like to point out that I believe our biggest challenge of the day very likely deals with cyberbullying. The use of electronic devices and gadgets, the internet, to bully one another as a result of the anonymity offered or the lack of face time that gives bullies the opportunity to thrive. Senator, I encourage you to consider the many examples that are presented today, but don't stop just at those, the compelling nature of those immediate examples. Consider this as it truly is, an epidemic. It is bigger than a single person. It's bigger than a single staff member or a school building or a school district. It is our culture, and our culture must change. I regret that any student in any school district has a less than positive experience as a part of their education. I acknowledge that we in the Sioux City Community School District are, like many others, we're a district of continuous improvement. We know that we must study the data, we must listen to our customers and our constituents, and we must uh, create meaningful change for the future. Thank you.